I have a lot of different size jars with different size components. They're not all the same component. You can see it's a tremendous variety. It's difficult to find what I want in any of these jars, so I dump them out. I used to dump them out on the table, and then I'd have a, a, a difficult time getting the parts all back into the jar. So then I started using a tray, like this, and then I could look through and find what I wanted. But then when I would put this back, it wouldn't all go back in. I'd try to get this in. But and so I made something that would take care of this problem would obviously be a tray for doing my sorting, but certainly one thing that has to happen is I have to have this corner open up. But just opening the corner is not enough. I also have to have some way to direct the, the things that are falling out of this into the jar, and it has to work with different size containers. So when you have something this complicated to do, you know this is not going to be a trivial design or fabrication, experiment with cardboard. Even if it doesn't work perfectly, it will tell you a lot about whether your idea is even feasible. In this case, it turned out that the, the cardboard design was good enough so that it could actually be used. Well, the first thing that I said was I would get a good piece of cardboard. This happened to be the lid of a good box. And I'm going to cut it so that these two corner pieces would open up. But if they just open up, there's going to be an opening here. And if I put this into the jar and poured the parts, it, they'd all just fall through that opening. So to keep the parts from falling through the gap between these wings that were opening up and the corner, I thought that I would need something flexible. So I taped ripstop nylon into this opening. And the reason for something like cloth is so that I can still close and it would fold up and I'd have a solid corner. I'd open it up and I would have this solid area for the parts to flow down. And you can see this is all very simple to make. All I did was cut here and fold here and cut in the corner and tape with just some masking tape this ripstop nylon here. And then I could actually test this. And this worked well, except for one thing. When I had small parts, they would get caught in the folds of the nylon. And I thought of another way to do this. So another corner of this same lid got pressed into service as the same basic idea. But in this case, instead of having a flexible material, I have some solid cardstock that is, again, just taped to the wings and this stock then can fold under the corner. But it has to be protected, so I have this piece of cardboard here that's taped onto the lid. What I'm going to do is demonstrate it with... And keep in mind, this is just a cardboard prototype. It's a little bit flimsy because it's cardboard. So I made a sturdier version of the same thing. In this case, I have a wooden uh, base, I have wooden sides, I have the aluminum wings that fold out, they're hinged, and I have used high-density polyethylene, which I'll explain in a minute, for these folding pieces, and an aluminum piece replacing the cardboard that I had had for, uh, to protect these folding wings and also to provide the, the tongue. And this is sturdier now. The cardboard is okay when it's uh, not quite so dilapidated. And I can just it pretty good, but it still spilled a few parts. And so I made another version, and in this version, the wings are aluminum, and they have these little tabs. This one should not spill anything. I'm going to take these bags out. They, they make pouring difficult.
when I played with the sturdier versions, I found a number of problems. One of the things was that the box, or the tray, uh, was difficult to position. It was easy for it to slip in too far, it was easy for it to slip out, and so what I wanted was something that would make it a, a lot easier and more automatic to position. And so what I came up with were these uh, bars that stick out this way and this way on each one. But if I just position it so that the whatever the jar is is sitting at this junction between the two of them, then these bars won't let the wings come outside the jar, and these won't let it go inside the jar. The second problem that I found was that if the wings don't move at the same rate, that is, if one of them moves in when the other one is not moving, there can be a binding problem. You see, one of these uh, wings right here is inside the other. If the other one tries to move first, it will run into this. What I did was I took piano wire crossways and at the hinge I added an extension. Now what this does is when this wing is moving in you can see what's happening. Its extension is moving out. And what that does because of this crossing of the piano wire it pulls the other wing in. In the same way with this one. So in other words either one of these will cause the other one to move symmetrically. Another nice thing about this is that the piano wire gives me a spring action. I can squeeze them together and then just let it go and it will automatically open itself into the jar. A third problem that I noticed was that I didn't have any convenient way to hold this closed and if I have a full tray or if I'm putting it away for storage I'd like this to stay closed so I made a little latching mechanism again with this stiff wire and this just goes up and down and when I close it I just pull that down there and now it's latched there was one other problem, which was spillage, especially if we had big uh, parts. And the way I corrected that was, I didn't just have the polyethylene on the bottom, I had it come up the side of the metal wing, and then come over the top. So now, what we have is more like a funnel. We have a top part to this, as well as the bottoms and sides. So, I'm going to latch it. Now this is an easy one. This is a, my standard jar. There's no problem with it. Because of the way the wings open up symmetrically and automatically spring open by themselves, I now have a free hand to hold the jar. That helps a lot as well. This will work with a very small jar as well. I'm going to do take these small parts and I'm going to put it into this very small mouth jar. All I have to do is put those two extension bars inside of it. And there we have it. The cardboard prototype is actually functional. You can make this and use it. Uh, the one thing is that it's not very sturdy. You have to be fairly careful when you use it. But it's still something that you can make in a half an hour. And so it is well worth it if you uh, don't have time to make something more substantial. One thing that you want to do is start with a good tray. You don't want to use corrugated cardboard, especially corrugated cardboard that is like this box where the corners are made by folding and there are gaps in it. This is not going to be strong if you modify it in any way. A much better starting point is a chipboard uh, lid like this that has solid corners. This is always going to be sturdy even if you make some changes to it. So that's a good starting point. You also need material for making these wings that fold in and for that I use a fairly heavy cardstock but still it's something you can cut with scissors and it's going to as you can see uh, have this wing shape that folds under the, uh, the tray 
and it's going to have a fold here that goes up to the top of the side piece that folds out and you just tape it around. I've used masking tape here because I never intended to make this a permanent or semi-permanent thing to use. But what I have found to be very effective is this clear packaging tape. I have one other piece that you have to make and that is this piece that covers the wings that fold in and also provides a tongue for supporting the wings when they fold out. And you want this to be fairly strong. It doesn't necessarily have to be as strong as, the, as this lid material. Uh, it could be a little bit weaker like this if you want. That's what I have used. And this is a functional uh, device, even though it was intended originally to be just a prototype. And you want to make something that is going to last for years. I have made two different versions. In this case, the tray is wood. It's one piece of plywood. Uh, in this case, the, it looks like it's copper, but this is actually not exactly copper. This is circuit board material, and you can get this from any surplus store. This is very common and also quite cheap. I've used it because it's quite sturdy. It's a fiberglass core with the copper on the outside. We don't care about the copper, but the fiberglass core uh, is a very good material. It's strong. Uh, you can cut it with tin snips. You have to work hard at doing that, but it is possible. And so it is a pretty good material for making something like this. In both of these designs, I have a, a wood sides and I have aluminum fold-out pieces that are hinged and they both have the same material that folds under the tray and this is high-density polyethylene. It's from a milk carton. See, this is a milk carton, or it was at one time. It's thin, but it's very strong. With this solid wood platform, you have to have this aluminum piece that is the same as what we had in the cardboard. In this case, this is actually a laminated version of the plywood. What I've done is I've taken three layers of this, of this um, circuit board material. There's a solid one on the bottom, a solid one on top, and around the edges I have a one inch strip. What that does is it makes it hollow in the middle. I don't care about it being hollow in the box itself, but by being hollow, I have a gap. You can see this gap right here between the bottom piece and the top piece, and the wings just fold right into that gap. So I wanted to point out uh, one other detail, and that is how to work with this high-density polyethylene. We know where to get it. It's from a milk carton. How do we make this sharp bend? You can see, and that's certainly not something that you would find in a milk carton. Well, what we do is we heat it up and bend it. You don't want to be doing this with uh, bare hands. When you heat this up, if you see the polyethylene turn clear, it starts out milky, if it turns clear, stop immediately because once it turns clear it means it's starting to flow that I have no problem now it's starting to go clear I don't know if you saw that and what I'm going to do is just put it clamp it between these two pieces of wood so they're going to act like a break the, the plastic is very easy to mold when it's this hot and it will hold the shape when it cools off